adjustments that you make to the saddle are going to affect the nut. In fact, when you're doing a setup, the order of operations is to adjust the neck, then the saddle, then the nut. I know that this saddle is at a good height and it also is at a height that gives me a little bit of playability up and down. I know that the nut is in need of help. So I can tell you by looking at this nut, not even playing the instrument yet, um, by checking this bass string, that nut is carved too low. This is going to buzz when I play it. Yeah. This nut is also not carved very deeply. Um, you can see that this, this string is, is actually uh, coming out over the top, which is actually normally a good thing. I, I would say that when, you're, when you have a nut professionally done, if the person really knows what they're doing, you're going to see that these strings actually uh, don't need to be sunk all the way down into these pockets. Um, however, because the height of this is so off, um, I do need to get this nut shimmed up. Again, I'm going to loosen these strings a little bit. Just enough that I can take strings out. Ooh. Oh, and look what happened here. As I was trying to pull this string out from the nut slot, um, the string itself got caught under one of the frets. Um, which means that this fret is sticking up. Now what I'm going to do here may sound really drastic, or seem really uh, drastic to a lot of people, but honestly, when you've got a nut that's glued in like this, there's not much other way of doing it. I grab a block, I put it up against the uh, nut, and in fact, you can see here that a previous repairman did, in fact, use a piece of a business card. It actually looks more like a, maybe a piece of a credit card or something like that. Uh, this is meant to be a temporary fix. This is not supposed to be what's permanently in there, but people do it all the time. Um, I can also see that they were very, very sloppy with their glue. Um, yeah, it's just not a very professional job but I encounter that all the time in, uh, in doing these guitar repairs. Now, even though they're not bone, these plastic nuts are very standardized. They are made with the correct shape, and they might be a better alternative for this guitar. And even though we're going to wind up with a bit um, of wood sticking out of the back here, I think this is a better choice for this guitar. Um, for right now. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to remove these old shims. I'm going to see if it would come out easily. Probably not. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay. Well, that's one of the shims. Yeah, actually you can see where the old magnetic uh, card is. So this was like a credit card. I'm going to start with the chisel and get the bulk of this off. And then I will make it smooth and right with that file. So I'm seeing wood pretty much the whole way across at this point, which is a good sign. Uh, kind of indicates to me that I can go ahead and use that, that file now. I'm going to start with the coarse end. The nut slot really needs to be perfectly level. And so I do not want to take this quickly. All right, so we've got our new nut here. And before I glue anything, before I look at anything, I'm going to see where my nut action is at. So I'm going to tighten this up a little bit.
and I can see that we're a little bit high on both the treble side and the bass side now. So what I'm going to do is because these nuts are already pre-carved, I'm going to take the excess height off of the bottom. And again, we go back and we test our height. On the treble side, I can see that we're just about perfect. And on the bass side, too. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get just a little bit of gelled super glue, and I'm just going to put it on that forward edge um, of the nut. So this actually glues to the front edge of the uh, of the fingerboard. All right, and that is set, so that's good to go. Now let's go ahead and get the string on here. Um, might as well show you this while I'm working on this here. A lot of people really don't understand how to wind their strings. And I'll probably do this a thousand times on this channel, but this is by far the easiest way um, I've found to do it. It does take a little bit of practice and getting used to, but I think it is just so much easier than everything else. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically bring this the string through the hole and taut, um, and then I'm going to add just a bit of slack into it, and then I'm going to give myself just enough room in the string to where I can wrap it around the peg head. Um, on the bass side, you're going to go clockwise around the top. On the treble side of the guitar, you're going to go counterclockwise around the top. From here, what I can do is I'm actually just going to bend that upwards, and I'm going to start winding. I'm going to start winding this, and you'll see what I do is I make sure that it catches underneath the string as it rotates. And you'll see what happens here is that extended piece gets trapped between the top and the bottom. And as you continue to tighten, that will tighten right up. And it winds downwards nicely and easily. And now it's fully taut. It's nice and it's neat. And I'm going to use my clipper tool here cut it right at that base. I'm not, I'm not, you know, leaving any extra on there. Probably get a little bit closer. Camera's slightly in the way, I apologize. There you go. And now there's nothing here that's going to stick you. I can, I can play with that all day. Nothing's going to stick you. Nothing's going to come out because there is, this is not going to dislodge because it's stuck between those strings now. So this is by far the best way to wind your strings. Learn how to do it. It's, uh, it's a really excellent and fast way to change your strings on your guitar. So real quick, one thing I am doing here uh, that you'll see me uh, when I'm changing strings on an acoustic is when I put the string in here, I kind of tug on it pretty hard, but I tug on it to make sure that the ball seats underneath the bridge, not underneath the pin. Uh, if, you, if that ball end of the string seats underneath the pin, you're going to wind up, uh, you know, tightening up your string, and this is just going to pop right out. Um, and that's not helping anybody. The bridge pin is in there to, to prevent the ball from coming back out from underneath the bridge. And that's the proper way to do it. So I've got all my strings on here now. They're not in tune. So in order to perform a setup, I do need to put it in tune. All right, so that's good enough for right now. Again, I'm going to check 
that all the strings have a bit of height over here, so we're not going to get any uh, buzzing. We're checking the flatness of the neck here as it uh, approaches the body. So this guitar does have a little bit of relief in the neck. It's not an unacceptable amount. But considering the other issues with the guitar, like you can see, for example, that as that fretboard reaches the body joint, it, uh, it has a slight hump in it. So I really don't want to cause that to wind up causing an issue with the string. So having a little bit of extra relief in the neck is actually probably a good thing right now. So, we know that the guitar is set up well. Um, it is playing properly. Let's take a quick listen. All right, so there are a few issues on this guitar that we're aware of that should be addressed in the near future. However, we knew that there were going to be. Um, this is a, a very common thing that occurs with instruments where there are more repairs required um, than what the customer is able to do right now. Um, I, as a luthier, I have to do my very best to make a, the instrument do as good as it can do for what they're paying me to do. Maybe go a little bit above and beyond here and there. For example, the, the way that I handled this nut, it's not really something that the customer is paying for. Um, I could have left that, that same nut on there. And I think most uh, luthiers out there probably would just leave that on there. But I think that uh, making a guitar play right and sound right um, as best as you possibly can without investing a whole lot extra work is uh, really the, the aim of the game here, and, and that's what my customers appreciate. I'm going to get that last hole um, placed for the truss rod cover, and I'm also going to just double check the electronics in here. Um, there's nothing I'm really going to do to that anyway unless there's just something like a contact cleaner needed or something like that. But I want to check it uh, if for no other reason than to be able to tell the customer about what's going on with their instrument. All right, so there is a little bit of scratchiness in the pots. So I have a little bit of electronics contact cleaner here. I'm going to see if I can't get it to kind of seep down into the potentiometer a little bit. already I can hear that the scratchiness is gone. All right, so that's it for this guitar. Um, this was a fun one. I'm just going to kind of wipe it down here while, while we're finishing it up. Just a little bit of polish here. Um, yeah, so, you know, bridge re-glues are never something that you want to take lightly. Um, definitely, if, it's, if you are not somebody who is really, really comfortable with uh, your tools and, and everything else that goes along with that, um, you know, this is one that you definitely want to hire a professional for. Um, a lot can go wrong. Um, a lot of specialty tools are utilized uh, throughout. And uh, it's just highly recommended that somebody who really knows what they're doing be in charge of, of making these, uh, these kinds of adjustments to your guitar. So I'm going to get this back in its case and call the customer, let them know that their, their guitar is ready to go. And um, other than that, you know, I do want to thank you for joining and for watching. 
greatly appreciate that. And uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your day. From Gabriel's Guitars, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Gabriel's Guitars. We greatly appreciate all of your comments, your shares, your likes. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you can be notified of any new videos. Thank you so much again, and have a great day.